Right, we're on our way to Avebury. I'm going to have a look at the uh, the henge there. Uh, white horses as well. So I thought whilst we're in the area we'll do the tourist bit. Yep. Anyway, here's a quick look round Devise's campsite. I'm trying to find a way out at the moment. It's a big site, isn't it? It is. What you were saying about the loos this morning? Well, they're a bit dated, that's all I'd say. And I don't think there's really enough showers for this number of people. No, it is obviously a, <coughs> a bank holiday week, isn't it? Yeah. There are a lot of tents here. Yeah. I mean, the thing about camping and caravan clubs sites is you get such a different uh, variety of uh, outfits. Don't yeah, you? yeah. Been on sites where there've been wigwams and things. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you're uh, glamping, uh, what do they call them? Ready, Ready camp. camp. That's how can they I kept calling them glamping tents or something. Very nice motorhome disposal point. Is there? there? Yeah, very nice. Big. Big. Right. Right. Open barrier. Because I don't. Do we need a key? Uh, uh, no. We need a key to get in. Do yeah, we know that? Yeah, I know that. I made yeah. a note of it. Okay. <coughs> yes, I remember it now. Right. So there was no one to get out the side. Where do, where do we go? Where do so go now? Left, left in the lane and right on the road. Yep. People saying about these cars parked in the lane here make it a little bit difficult. Now turn right. If you've got a big unit. Yeah. Okay. Catch up with you later? Yep. way system there. What are you doing? You are approaching your destination. Suck it. <coughs> it's one of those ones where you scan your card again. Yeah. Right, that's our map. Right. There's the hinge there. Off we go. Yep. So what it says here is that the Avebury stones were constructed four, th four and a half thousand years ago by farming communities and uh, more than 1,000 years earlier agricultural settlements replaced the roving groups which were living and hunting and gathering in the Kennet Valley. So the great stone circle and the surrounding bank and ditch form a monument which archaeologists call the Henge. And they're saying here that there were the once there were 98 stones in the outer circles, only 27 now. But in the 1300s, many of the stones were pulled down and buried in shallow pits, perhaps for religious reasons. And they excavated it in the early 20th century when they found antler picks and ox, ox shoulder blades in the bottom of the ditch. So that whole place is a World Heritage Site. You've got Neolithic enclosures and Bronze Age burial mounds and right, so, so you can see some of the stones there. They concrete uh, the concrete pillars show where some of the stones were. And the sun's just come out. Oh, that's good. Well, we're just going to go to the manor first. And then we'll, sorry, we're going to go to the farmyard, farmyard the and the museum first, which is down here. A, ne a Neolithic hut over there, which we'll go and have a look at. Oh, 
that's the shop. Oh. And get gu guided tours around here. Right. Museum then. Yeah, so there's a wall board here, it tells you sort of some of the timelines here. So the West Kennet Long Barrow was built 3650 BC. Avery Henge 2600 BC and Silbury 2400. The, the Henge itself was built before the pyramids. So it's a living museum here. All about the people who lived here. Yeah. So that was a lot better the Long Barrow. The mound was built between 5,600 and 5,700 years ago. Wow. So, four and a half to 4,000 years ago, there were about five to 600 stones in the circle. Many have fallen, been broken up or buried. By 1900, there were only 23 stones standing. And connections with Orkney. Yeah, we, we've been there, haven't we? We went to the Ring of Brodgar, didn't we? Yeah, where we did. Yeah. And stood Scarabray. And Scarabray, yeah. We stood by the stones there. And some of the everyday objects they found. Scrapers. Flints made from large pieces of flint. You made use them to make leather. Pot, fragment of a pot there. Multi purpose tool, Swiss Army knife then. Arrowheads. And a polished stone. 16th century dovecot. Not quite as big as the one at um, Penmon Point, is it? No. Well, you didn't. You didn't actually go in it, did you? No, I, I think you watched the video. Though. You watched my video. Yeah. I shall put a link up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they obviously used to eat pigeons. Come out of there, girls. I think these girls would eat pigeons as well, wouldn't they? Morning. Morning. Human remains here, so. <laughs> and <the> ginger. <laughs> a fine fellow of a man. It's a young goat, Poppy. Limit to what we can learn about Neolithic times, no written records, just the clues they left behind. And the pots. And the skeletons. So one of a dog here. Similar in breed to a fox terrier. Yeah, yeah. So there were smaller dogs around then. You hear that pops? Flint arrowheads. Cattle jawbone. That's been some of the people who did some the digging. Some of the people who did the digging, yeah. And these objects are between 5,600 and 5,300 years old. This was pre the, the barrow here, wasn't it? But Those are the rubbish in rubbish. Sometimes they arranged hmm? pottery. So sometimes they thought it's just the rubbish thing. Yeah. And other times they put bones, pottery, and stones carefully arranged. Right. Mm. The Neolithic. 
because they had some sort of religion, and because they arranged things so to do with the day and night sky. So death was not the end of an active role for the people of the early Neolithic Avebury. Human remains were not hidden away forever, but were visited and used by living people. Most people were not buried in a grave when they died, were placed in long mounds known as long barrows. And several of these in the Avebury area, the best is the long barrow, West Kennet. Some long barrows, bodies may have been brought in as bare bones after exposure outside, but at West Kennet it seems that the bodies were put in their hole. A plaster replica of a It's the largest artificial prehistoric mound in Europe. It would have been huge then, wouldn't it? Absolutely mm. huge. Yeah. When they started putting the stones up the hinge four and a half thousand years ago. Cut a ditch, prized chalk from the ground, and brought stones in. Local sarsen stones used as standing stones. There would have been lines of standing stones. Yeah. Yeah. Avenues. Yeah. Yeah, the flow here changed and wasn't We're leading the people to the to the hinge. People walked along the avenue, it might have been reserved for spirits or the dead, or memorials in stone. To paths used to once to approach the monuments. Join the docks. <laughs> and the bones. Neolithic toolkits. <laughs> Bits they used. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking at there. The shoulder blade used as a shovel. Yeah. Tara. That's ta Tara, that's a Neolithic bone. You don't need you looking at it. When they broke up the stones and buried them. Okay, scissors there. <laughs> Barber surgeon skeleton. Got Tudor silver coins there. And sixpence from James I. Farthing from Charles II. Clay pipes. Victoria coins. Remains of a purse. And religious pendants. Well, 19th century toys, look at that. Little um, toy cups. Yeah. Marmalade from Dundee. <laughs> Some of the areas are closed for erosion control. <laughs> decided to roll. She did that last night and she's had two showers in the last night. She said, yeah, bathed her twice since we've been away and she's rolled in something horrible. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> These are the stones. These are the stones. Obviously some of them have been chipped away, haven't they? Yeah. Taking lumps out of them, so they must have been a lot bigger than this originally. Some of them were, like I said, were burnt in the 1300s. Must have thought, you know, it was something evil. Yeah. You can see the, uh, the mound there, can you? Yeah. You can see how huge the area was, can you? Yeah. Right.
Nej. Okay. Kom man. So I'll crack completely. You can see the size of that compared to Tara, can you? Oh, that's it. This one's even bigger over here. <laughs> the road builders obviously didn't worry about ar archaeological um, evidence at all, did they? Let's just put a road through here. I've suddenly got some company. <laughs> 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 Come on. Obviously got some new age friends here, haven't we? Yeah. We've got these hats on, haven't we? Yeah. It's been worn away by water over the years, that one, doesn't it? Quite high this mound, isn't it? So this surrounded sort of the whole area. Oh, it's a, well, it's a huge mound. Must be what, 100 feet tall. I'm guessing. Definitely a good idea to come here early. You do start to see the size of some of these stones. Look at this one. Seat here, Jen. Look like you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> Girls, Tara, woo! Sitting down. Too much going on. Yeah, look at the size of that. Right. Cafe. Yeah. Just got the stones over there as well. These must have been the inner stones there, aren't they? Well, I've never been here. Have you ever been here no, before? No, no. I have, I can't really remember. No. Mine's done It's quite an amazing place. I mean, there's only so many stones you can look at, I guess, but just the thought that these stones were put here four and a half thousand years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was Yeah, and it obviously had some sort of religious significance to these people why would you do it otherwise yeah <laughs> A nice little cafe there yeah. and hungry yeah. poppy angry, hungry poppy you want something to eat as well then yeah yeah okay right we're going to explore silbury hill and the long barrow, me and Poppy.